Now when you think about Mizuno, I know exactly what you think about. Straight away you're thinking for their forged irons, for the JPX irons, and an iron range that's been around for a long time. For me personally, I think about the MP32 irons, but today we're talking about a driver. And I know then straight away when you think about Mizuno, you think about, I'm not bothered about the woods, they never quite perform, but, but today we have got the Mizuno ST Max driver and it's something for me that you shouldn't overlook when you're going to get fitter because I've actually done this video once but the audio didn't work unfortunately so we're back out here at Waterfront Golf retaking the video but straight away for me obviously behind the golf ball a driver that sits and looks fantastic you can see from the top of the driver we do have that Mizuno logo in the side we do have the two-tone top with the carbon on the back and then we also have that outer layer the outer ring that just gives you a little bit more shape to that driver head so a fantastic looking head there and this is something that you want behind the golf ball again we know that this is going to be the ST Max version we know it's going to be a 460 head but straight away down behind the ball it doesn't look too big the shape of it is very confidence inspiring if anything because I do know how I've hit this and I was impressed and now I get to hit it again it doesn't seem to fail a fantastic ball fight there a penetrating ball fight a little draw up the middle but for me straight away feel and sound is something that i'm impressed with but obviously it has to repeat not only does it have to repeat we need to make sure that this driver is performing as well as for me the best driver on the market for myself again i've been testing drivers so far this year and the one that is in my bag is the cobra dark speed ls and we're going to jump in the studio after this shot here and compare it for numbers before we get it back out here on the golf course because one big thing is for me inside testing numbers is good we can get spin rates we can get totals we can get carries but obviously on tricky shots out here especially the second here at waterfront is a hole that i don't like at all and i want to be able to obviously start to be able to think right can i get on there with confidence because the two drivers really are quite far apart starting up the right but not moving off much and again this has straight flight bias technology in there which we'll talk about inside but there not much movement on there started up the right didn't move that'll just be in the right hand rough the strike was nowhere near the same so obviously very interesting up there to see if yes we've got a lot of technology in this drive which we're going to talk about including the variable thickness face that is saying that we're going to obviously not lose as much distance and straight away there it came off the toe, it stayed out to the right, so it didn't do the quick left, but how's it gonna do for distance wise? Now, interesting up here, not much run out here today, obviously, but a good driving, a good position for me off the tee box, but the missed strut one, which again was up the right a little bit, I still probably only lost five yards. And five yards for me, obviously, with a missed strike is a pretty good result. Obviously, we know there's a lot of technology in there, so let's jump in the studio, let's talk a little bit about the technology in this driver the mizuno st max then let's compare it to the cobra dark speed ls which for me has been the best driver i've tried so far but obviously a total different look from the top different shape a little bit smaller all designed totally different but i felt like i had a lot of confidence on that tee straight away there on the first tee without any practice swings this morning to be able to hit the fairway i didn't feel like i had to be warmed up to be able to hit that which is the majority of most everyday golfers Again, I'll hit a few more shots in there to warm up, so should start to see the optimums we can get from this driver. So let's start with the Mizuno. So let's see if I can replicate some of the swings I put outside and let's see what numbers we can get. That's a pretty similar one to what I hit outside. Let's see the carry on that. 269 running out to 290. So straight away there right up there with what exactly what i would expect so 160 ball speed not too bad at all again a little bit higher let's see the flight on that one carry again spun up a little bit 260 going 280 157 ball speed up into the 3000s with the spin rate which is something i've always struggled with but obviously with this driver we know that 
they have got the full carbon plate on the bottom. So a one piece carbon plate, which has allowed them to move some weight around and again, get more weight towards the front of the face, start to get a lower CG, start to get it trying to get a little bit lower spin, but also a variable thickness face, also trying to get some forgiveness from this driver, which is exactly who it's designed for. But for me, it is giving me confidence. But there, I didn't feel like I put too bad a swing on that. And straight away, I lost quite a little bit of distance there. And that one there was a little bit healy. It stayed straight. Carry wise, 255. So again, it has spun up. There's not much curvature on there, but that's well into the 3000s now. So that's where I'd start to be concerned with this driver. Certainly feels great, sounds great, but let's compare it. Straight away down here, obviously a lot smaller profile behind the golf ball. Maybe don't feel as confident as I should do. But that's, let's see, a high spinny one. Also going 260, so Healy one there, going 260, but that's what I expect from a Healy one. Obviously, previous one that I hit with a Mizuno was actually a well-struck Mizuno that just didn't seem to go as far as we'd want. So that's well-struck, little fade. 270 carry, going 290, so very similar to the best one. Spin down there at 1.8, so a little bit more lower spinning as we'd expect. Got that little bit more run, slightly lower ball flight, which I have to say is what I do like to see, but obviously it's not just seen it in here, it's seen it out on the golf course. But will I lose more distance on an off-centered hit with this driver? Struck that pretty well, little fade. 270 carry, going out to 290. So certainly not much difference in there. Let's get back out on the golf course now. Let's compare it on the hardest tee shot here at Waterfront. Now, if we look at the two drivers out here now, you can see obviously the differences. We have got the matte finish here on the Cobra and we have got more of a gloss finish with the carbon at the back. But both of these obviously have the mark in the middle, which I do think is great for everyday golfers because how many times I see people not set the ball up in the middle. Obviously, if we look at sizes there, it's hard to tell. I'll put some other pictures on screen now. But we can see that we have got the bigger head here in the Mizuno and again for most golfers that might give you that little bit more confidence but for me it's not a head that looks way too big because of that shape the shape is fantastic and behind the ball looks very sleek now obviously what we want from a driver is a driver that sits behind the golf ball and like I mentioned on the first just gives you that confidence that you do feel like you can go after it you can obviously just get onto the first tee if you haven't warmed up I would always suggest warming up I tell mid handicap Dave this every single time, and does he? Comment below, Dave. But obviously behind the golf ball, it doesn't look too big. It's not something that, whereas a lot of people, when they pick up maybe the Ping G430 Max, they start to see, hmm, that looks pretty big. It's got the turbulators on the top, and it's something that might put a lot of people off going for the Ping. But here straight away, obviously, it's a good looking driver. But let's talk about those numbers inside. Obviously the numbers inside and still for Mizuno, they're still that little bit behind. So obviously a little bit behind. And is that gonna affect you? Obviously the price of these drivers are very similar. These aren't the most expensive drivers on the range, but obviously Cobra and Mizuno do normally come in a little bit less than Ping, TaylorMade, Tightlist and Callaway. So obviously if price point is a big thing, are you really going to see the difference in this? Again, this is a driver that we will test with Dave. Obviously, is he going to see the difference? We know that he's at the moment using a flatter driver to try and help him straighten it up. We know we had his lesson on the channel last week, but this is a tough driving hole for me here. It's very tough to get off this tee and be able to reach this par five in two. You have to be accurate. And again, for me there, not the best swing. 
but that has done incredibly well. Started up that right hand side, drew back towards the bunker, and that was a very low strike on the face. But obviously there for me, even a missed strike, I didn't feel like it's gonna go too wayward. And yes, obviously you might say there that, well, you are a PGA pro, you shouldn't be really hitting drives wayward. Unfortunately, I am just like an everyday golfer. The golf ball can still go anywhere it wants at any given time, but, Obviously straight away now, like I mentioned inside, the profile of this head is much smaller. So much smaller there. Does that put me off? After hitting that one, it just makes me feel like mm, I've got to probably swing a little bit more within myself. I can't really go full tilt at this because it is a smaller head. So let's see how we can strike it. And two identical shots there. Again, that one has just faded about a yard, but low on the face. It'll be very interesting up there to see what's happened because with these drivers, we saw inside, we know what the best drivers are going to do. But out here, those are two more realistic shots, two missed strikes that are still up there in play. But how much distance have we lost? Have we lost considerably more off the LS dark speed head than we have with the Mizuno? That's obviously what we need to know for you, the everyday golfer. Are we losing 20 yards instead of 10 yards? Or on the first hole, for example, I only lost around about five yards from a missed strike. So that might be more beneficial to you than something that, yes, might go a little bit further when you do get it out of the middle. But if we're hitting more off-centered hits as a rule, then something like the Mizuno ST Max could be perfect. So straight away, the first ball we have up here is, let's see what it is, a Kirkland, which was with the Cobra driver. We then have a seed golf ball just up there so very interesting there with very similar strikes off the bottom we have lost a little bit more yards maybe five to ten yards with that cobra so would that cobra be the right one for you obviously if you're thinking about your cover speed if you're thinking about off-centered hits we know the ls drivers have got a lot more technology in them now but off-centered hits you might lose a little bit more than the technology advancements in the more max drivers. Again, they're gonna have a little bit more perimeter weight in, they're gonna get better ball speeds off off-centered hits, which is exactly what I've seen there, even with the Mizuno. So don't overlook Mizuno now, they are now coming into the wood market, providing not just fantastic irons, but also fantastic woods that I can say from that driver. So it'll be interesting to see if they can catch up with the premium brands. Guys, have you got a Mizuno driver? Have you ever had a Mizuno driver or would you never think about getting one? Thanks for watching, guys. And if you are enjoying the content, please do consider hitting that subscribe button below. And I will see you again tomorrow.